Hi, I'm George, and we'll be doing this Photoshop Elements charcoal sketch effect. Now, if you like this video, hit that like button, hit share and subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos, and of course, check out my channel for a bunch more graphics projects. Okay, we'll start off with a new image of just the girl that we'll be using in here. This is going to be requiring actually two separate files, and you'll see that as we go. There it is. Now I have links to all of these images I'll be using here inside of the description. So just go there if you want to download these actual images to work with it. Now the first thing I want to do is to put this into a better framing on this. We'll use the crop tool for that. Click on that. It should give you an automatic guess and I think that's pretty good. Basically a square format looks nice. Choose the green check mark and let that clean that up. There we go. Okay now on this let's just put that right there. I'm going to make a duplicate of the background layer. Right click, duplicate layer, choose OK and hide the background. That's just a safety just in case because we're going to be changing this layer up here. Let's now get rid of all of the color on this layer. Go up to enhance, come down to adjust color, hue saturation, and push the saturation all the way to the left. There we go. Choose OK. And it's now a grayscale image. Now let's make a duplicate of this layer. Right click and duplicate layer. Choose OK. There it is. We're going to invert this layer. So that's filter come down to adjustments and invert it makes a negative out of that layer just like that let's now blend the negative into the positive using a blend mode up here and you want to come down and use the color dodge and it should give you a white page right there we're now going to blur this inverted layer and show the bottom layer as a sketch so that's filter come down to blur and gaussian blur and i'll set this one at a radius of 10 pixels right there just a bit of a sketchy effect there we go now come back down to the gray layer right click duplicate layer choose OK push this layer to the top of your layer stack and we'll be applying a charcoal effect onto this go up here to filter come down to filter gallery and in here you want to go in where it says sketch right there and charcoal and I have mine set with a thickness of 2, a detail of 5, and a light dark balance of 72. And it has just some nice charcoal kind of sketch lines in there. That's what I like about that one. Choose OK. Let's now blend this into everything else underneath. And I'll change our blend mode here to multiply. And there we go. There's the basic charcoal sketch effect. Now we need to put this onto some paper. So come down to the background layer down here. And go up to Layer, New Fill Layer, Solid Color choose OK and down here we have this little hexadecimal numbers right here we're going to put in the code for this tan layer and that's an E B E 2 C C right there and choose OK and make a duplicate of this layer right click and duplicate layer there we go now we're going to come up to this layer here the gray layer and blend this layer into this layer down here and for that you want to go up here to the blend modes and you want to use the linear burn and that gives us that nice coloration now I want to have some texture on this some paper texture go to our paper now right click on this layer and choose simplify there we go now go up here to filter come down to filter gallery and in here you want to be in the texture section and you want to be on the texturizer and sandstone I have a scaling of 100 and a relief of 6 and lighting from the top left and choose OK and that puts in that kind of sandstone texture. Now if it's too strong for you, that's why I have the second layer right down here. Just bring down the opacity up here and then it's not quite as strong. So I think 70% is good on this one. There we go. And that gives you some texture for the paper in there. Okay, now image is all done. We're now going to work on that folded corner trick up here. So go up to the top layer and we'll make a new layer above here, a shape layer. Make sure your foreground color is black. Go up here to this rectangle tool and set this at square right there and then come up here right up to the corner and then pull that down until you have about a 300 by 300 square. It doesn't need to be exact but pretty close. There we go. Close enough. I'm going to use my arrow keys here and just kind of tap this into place and there it is right in the corner. Okay so that's all set to go. We'll be using this to give us that folded corner. Now it's a shape so right click where it says shape 1 and choose simplify layer now it's just a graphic sitting up there okay next let's zoom in a little bit on this there we go and then grab the guideline left hand side on the rulers if you don't see your rulers go to view and make sure that rulers is checked right there 
grab that and pull a guideline right onto that center of that and pulling straight down and that gives you that center point. Now we need that for the next step. Go back over here to your shapes, change your shape to the ellipse, set that as a circle and draw from center and that's why the guidelines. Then come right on that guideline, there it is, and make a new shape, make a circle that's the same size as that square. There you go. Okay now take that circle and push that to the left so that it lines up right on that left hand side. Now duplicate the circle, right click and duplicate layer, choose OK. Pull this one over and down so it lines up right at the bottom right hand side. Now I'm going to hide that bottom bit there just for a little bit. You can see our little guidelines in there. Take the bottom one and move it down just a little bit and then take this one here, that's that layer, and move that over just a little bit. So you have just a little bit of a space left right there in the middle. Okay, let's now select both of these two layers. Hold the control key down, select both layers, just the circle layers, right click, and we're going to merge those shapes together. There we go. Okay, let's now hide that. Let's come back down to our square. Now I want to put a gradient on this. We no longer need those guidelines, by the way. So I'll just go up to view and just uncheck guidelines. There we go. Now for this, go over and click on the gradient tool and then click on the gradient right there. I have mine already set up in here and that's with a left side. Click on the little left side color stop right there and then click where it says color. Bring that up and then type in there 838383. And that gives you kind of a medium gray. Choose OK. And then go to the right side color stop, click on that and click on the color swatch right there. And this one should be DA, DA, DA. And choose OK. Just kind of a medium to a light gray right in there. We'll do this a couple of times. First time though, hold the control key down, click on the thumbnail for that layer that selects it, and then come right down here to the corner and just pull up like that. Just puts in a little bit of a gradient. We're going to readjust this gradient in, a, in just a bit, but I wanted just a basic gradient in here to begin with. And then deselect. Okay, we're going to bring our black circles up. See, there's kind of the bend right there for that corner. We have the first part of that bend. We need to now chop off this top part, and we'll do that with a couple of steps. First, on our shape layer, hit the layer mask. You should get a nice white layer mask. Okay, now go up here to the top layer, our shape layer. Let's go back over to the shapes, change this to a rectangle, and then change this to unconstrained. And then you can come right here and just do kind of a big rectangle shape, just like that, just a big shape. And then pull that over here. It needs to be a lot larger, as you can see there. Now click on a corner, and then just outside the corner, you can grab that and you can then pull that around. Now what I want to do is I want to find a spot where this is just touching both of these circles. So just do a little bit of rotation, and then pull it around to get just right onto those two circles. Looks like right about there is just about right. And then I'll use my arrow keys to the left hand side here and get this so they're just touching. And there we go, it looks pretty good. Okay, that takes care of that top section. Okay, now that we have this bit here, we're going to begin working on the layer mask right down there. So let's go up to this shape up here and then hold the control key down, click on that shape that selects just that piece right there. Come down to this layer mask, click on your layer mask, grab a paintbrush, the size doesn't matter. Mine's right now at 91 pixels and it's a hard edge brush, that's fine. And then just paint right inside here and we're painting black right onto that layer mask right there. Basically copying over that shape up there onto that layer mask. Okay, so that one's done. You can hide that, we're done with that. Okay, now we need to get these two little pieces out here and out here. And for that, I'm going to go over here and go up to this layer, hold the control key down, click on that, and that selects that area. Let's now invert this. So let's select inverse, and now the outside area is selected, which includes those little pieces. And then go back onto our shape layer, make sure you're on the right hand side, look for your light blue outline, and then with that paintbrush, just paint right in on top of that piece right here, and then right down there on top of that piece right there. And then deselect. And there's our basic corner section. Okay, now we need to hide this piece on the layers underneath and let's go ahead and hide that as well. You need to hide these pieces. So I'm on this layer mask, hold the Alt key down and pull straight down. That copies that layer mask down here. And just keep on doing that until we have all of those layer masks copied down. There we go. And it's now clear back in that area. Okay, back up to this layer mask right here. It needs to be done in this sequence. You want to have just that corner piece copied like this back to this layer. Let's bring back up these two black pieces up here. I now want to get rid of this bit in here using this shape. So let's go up here to this layer, hold the control key down, click on that. That selects that shape. Come back down to this layer mask right down here. Back to the paintbrush. 
we have our black right now and then just paint in here to paint that out. I'm going to hide that layer so you can see this. So we're just going to paint right in here and then just paint out that piece of that and that leaves us with that little bit of a curved corner in there. Let's go ahead now and deselect. So there's the basic bent corner. Now we need to fix the gradient right in here. So go to the left hand side. There it is. Hold the control key down. Click on that thumbnail. That selects that area right there. Let's go back to our gradient and this time come right to the corner here and pull just a little short one. You can go back and forth a little bit until you get exactly right. I think that looks pretty nice right there. Okay, now let's go ahead and deselect that. We now need to put a little bit of a shadowing right in here, and that's on this image right there, this layer right here. So for that, we're going to go back to our gradient tool right here, come down to the gradient, click on the gradient, click on the second one over. That's going to be your foreground color, which in this case is black to transparent. Choose OK. There it goes. should be black to clear. Make sure you're on that layer, and then just a little short gradient right there. Just adding in just a little bit of a shadowing right in here. Okay, last step on this whole process for your curved corner, and that's up here on our corner layer again. Just a little shadowing right in here. So we'll go up to Layer, come down to Layer Style, Style Settings, Drop Shadow. Now I have mine set at a 30 degree angle, that's okay and spring the distance out just a little bit. And I think I'll pull this around there. So about 120 looked pretty good. Somewhere in there, 124, that's like a bit of a shadowing right in here. Bring the distance out just a little bit more. There we go, just like that. Okay, there's the curled corner. Okay, so this picture is actually done at this point. So go up to your top visible layer, which right now should be that curled corner layer. Hold on the Control, Shift, Alt, and then tap the E key. And that copies all this stuff onto a new layer right there. Let's do a new file, File, New, Blank File. I have myself for the default Photoshop element size, 6x4, 300 resolution, choose OK. There we are, let's put that right there for the moment. Let's now fill this in with a gradient. Go back over here, back to the gradients. Now you can use any gradient you want. I'm going to reset this to the one that we already used. So click on the left hand side, color stop, and that was 838383. Choose OK. Right hand side, notice that goes transparent. Just click on that top color stop right there and set the opacity here all the way to the right to 100. There we are. And then click the right hand side color stop. Click on the color again, and then this one was that DADADA. -D -A -D -A. And again, kind of a light gray. There we go. Choose OK. Now make sure we're on linear right here. Go just to off the screen up there. Hold the shift key down, pull straight down, and let go. That gives you a nice dark to light gradient right there. OK, that one's good. Now let's go back over here. Now for this step, you want to have floating windows enabled like that. If you don't have that, go up to Edit, come down to Preferences, click on General, and right there, where it says allow floating documents in export mode, make sure that that is checked right there. Choose OK. You can then float your document. And the reason for that is I want to take this layer here and just drag it over to that file. There we go. OK, that can go out of the way. So now we're in this file. We need to resize this. We're a bit too large at this point. So use the Control T keyboard shortcut. It brings up our control panel, our transform panel right down below here. Set the size to 75% and then change the angle here to 20. There we go. And choose OK. And then pull it down so it's about like that. There we go. I now want to bend that back corner back always. And we'll do that up here with the image. Come down to Transform and Distort. And then take the upper left hand corner and just pull that in a bit. There we go. Kind of like that and choose OK. So there we go. We can now pull it up just a touch. And that's all set except for another drop shadow. So go up to Layer, come down to Layer Style, Style Settings, Drop Shadow. I'm going to change my angle here to 150. And on the size, set this one at 18. Set the distance at 17, and I'll leave that at 35 and choose OK. All right, there is our pencil sketch sitting on that background. All we have left is to bring in that hand, and I have that up here. Again, you can get this downloaded from the website, and that's hand right there. This is kind of an upside down picture like that, so let's go up here to Image, Rotate, 180. There it is. Again, it's a floating window. 
grab that layer and drag it over here. There we go. And you can close that down. We're done with that one. Now on this, we'll resize this as well. Use the Control T keyboard shortcut, brings up your control handles, and then resize this one to 70%. There we go, like that. Choose OK. We're now going to get rid of all this background stuff. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. That looks pretty good. Use the magic wand. I have my tolerance set at 50. Add a layer mask at this point. Make sure you're on that layer mask. That's good. Click inside that hand for that area right there. And then grab your paintbrush. It should still be on black. And then just paint that in like that. And then deselect. Do the same thing for this part right down here inside the hand. Back to the paintbrush. Paint in there. What I'm doing is I'm painting black onto the layer mask and that's hiding that part of the picture. Okay, back to our magic wand. Click anywhere outside here. This time just grab that paint bucket, click inside that fills that area, and then deselect. We'll zoom out, fit on screen. And last thing is to get these two pieces out of here. Make sure it's still on your layer mask. That looks fine. And then grab the paintbrush. And then just paint black over those spots on the layer mask and that cleans those out. There we go. Okay, the hand is now taken care of. We can then move that around so it's a good spot. I kind of like it right down here. So the hand is just painting or drawing right into that dark part of the hair. Looks pretty natural right there. You can position it anywhere you want, obviously, but I kind of like it right there. It stays away from the face that way. Okay, last little step. Come down to layer one, right click, and choose copy layer style. Go up to the hand layer, right click on the name, and paste layer style, and that copies that drop shadow from this layer onto that hand layer. And there we go, there's the hand drawing this charcoal sketch effect. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos, and also check out the link below for my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. It's the best way to learn how to use this program. And I'll see you next time.